Hi, I'm Mark with the Open Networking Lab. I'd like to talk to you today about the work we've been doing for multi-layer networks with ONOS. So talking to service providers, we've learned that all of them are operating multi-layer networks. At the top of the network sits the service layer, where services such as VPNs and logical tunnels are provisioned. This is mapped onto an optical, onto a packet layer. The packet layer is nothing more than a bunch of uh, packet routers. At the bottom sits the optical layer, which consists of rodents and optical fibers. The fundamental problem service providers are having is that each of these layers is managed independently. As a consequence, they run into a lot of issues with e efficiency of bandwidth utilization, sometimes as low as 30%, and other issues such as uh, difficulty in running advanced multi-layer uh, protection and restoration. The conceptual solution for this is to manage these independent networks in a logically centralized control plane. And that is exactly what we're pitching here with ONOS today. The proof of concept that you will be seeing in a minute is structured as follows. At the bottom, we have three vendor domains. On the left-hand side, we have a Siena domain, which lives in Ontario, Canada, consisting of Siena Rodems and a Corsa packet switch. In the middle, you can see the Fujitsu domain, where Fujitsu offered Rodems and Corsa offered the packet switches. At the right-hand side, you see the Huawei domain, where both the packet and optical layers were provided by Huawei. In each of those domains, we have a Spiron traffic generator, which will drive the actual traffic through the network. On top of that, we have a single logically centralized control plane, ONOS. This is running in Menlo Park, California, and comes with the appropriate drivers, providers in ONOS speak, to drive the, the various vendor-specific hardware. OpenFlow, Sienna TL1, Fujitsu TL1, and Huawei PISA. The beauty of the demo is that we run a set of applications and the applications are not vendor specific. So for example, the bandwidth on demand application is gonna drive bandwidth on demand in every vendor domain. There is no such thing as a Fujitsu specific bandwidth on demand or Sienna specific or Huawei specific. Let's switch over to the demo. So this is our ONOS GUI. You will recognize the same domains as I showed you before. Sienna on the left hand side, Fujitsu in the middle, and Huawei at the right. All of this is actual hardware. So for example, for the Sienna optical layer, we are using the 6500 series, that's peak TL1. The packet switch in this domain is a Corsa DP6430, that is speaking OpenFlow 1.3 in this case. In the Fujitsu domain, a very similar setup. Here we are using the 9500 series rodents that also speak Fujitsu TL1. And again, a packet switch offered by Corsa, the DP6430, that again speaks OpenFlow. On the right hand side, Huawei optical layer is the 8800 series that speak PSAP. And the packet layer in the Huawei case is, is uh, realized by the 9800 series that speaks PISA again. The hosts you see here at the top are actually the Spiron traffic generators. Let's create some traffic in the first domain and the Siena domain. So it, the, the GUI makes it easy to track for us the different layers of the network. At the bottom you have the optical layer, at the top we can see the packet layers. While the traffic is running, ONOS allows us to track what is going on in the data plane. So here you can clearly see that packet la layers, how they are mapped onto the optical layer. Also note that it is, from ONOS's vantage point, it is, becomes easy to monitor and know exactly what is going on in the data plane. For a packet switch, that is a trivial operation. Based on port stats and flow stats, we can accurately deduce how much traffic is flowing through the network. But this is not the case for Rodems in general. But given ONOS's vantage point, where it has control of both the packet and optical layers, 
Onos knows exactly what, how much traffic is flowing through the Rotom layer as well. While this completes, we will set up the same kind of traffic in the Fujitsu layer. And the interesting thing there is that um, we, we apply the policy in the application. It's important to note that this policy can be applied in, to any layer uh, of the network. It's all through an application layer process. What's going on is that the policy says that we, any link that goes over 80% utilization, ONOS is instructed to find a different path. So, well, let's set that up. You can see traffic starts running, just like in the Sienna case. Um, and originally it starts on the lower path. But once it hits 80%, you'll see ONOS will set up a second light path, as the policy calls for. Let us now turn to a different viewpoint. This is the Spirant traffic generator GUI. On this speed dial, you can see the Spirant is generating, generating 100 gigabits of traffic. On the right-hand side, you see it is still at zero gigabits per second. Even though ONAS is reporting our 35 gigabits per second or 40 gigabits per second is already flowing. Why this discrepancy? It has to do with the TL1 software plugins that basically tell us immediately after sending the commands to configure Rodems, they tell us immediately to ONOS, yes, we are done. However, in reality, it takes a little while for the optics to stabilize, to hit the correct power levels. And so it's only after a little while that you'll see traffic starts ramping up, just like you see going on right now. Now we've also hit the point where we hit the 80% utilization and you'll see clearly that ONOS, as instructed, applies that policy of 80% utilization and opens up a secondary path in the optical layer. Let us now turn our attention to the Huawei domain. I will set up a 10 gigabits per second connection in the Huawei domain. And you should see that showing up shortly. Here it is. So you can see the packet layer in yellow, how it is mapped onto the blue layer, the optical layer, right? My colleague from Huawei, Jingjing, will now make a call to the lab uh, in Plano, Texas, where we will pl unplug the fiber that sits here. If you follow the ONOS GUI, you will see that the fiber, this fiber will be cut and ONOS will take initiative to do optical re layer restoration and reroute the traffic along the upper path. If you look at the bandwidth diagram on the far end, you will see a short dip in traffic of about one to two seconds where traffic is lost while ONOS does, performs the restoration. But all come, becomes well soon enough. So that concludes my demo for today. I will briefly switch over to some of the key points, the key takeaways for this demo. So first of all, we demonstrated ONOS running on real hardware. And it is controlling both the packet and the optical layers. It is important to note that a single control plane can drive multiple vendor domains at the same time, multiple vendors that all use different protocols. And finally, uh, the key takeaway is that applications the abstractions that ONOS offers allows you to develop applications that are truly uh, vendor agnostic. This is essentially a proof of concept to demonstrate that ONOS can in fact run and operate actual hardware in a multi-vendor environment. At ON Lab, we reached out to many service providers and we, we learned from their pain points in running multi-layer uh, networks. In particular, we, we reached out to AT&T and they were very instrumental in pulling all of this together. Then we started approaching vendors to see who was interested in building something that was truly multi-vendor and multi-protocol aware. And the two major application scenarios in mind are core networks, uh, which are long distance, uh, long reach kind of networks, uh, and metro networks. We would love to take this one step further and start deploying this in, on larger scales 
and in actual production networks. So ONS is, is really the premier event, uh, everything to do with software-defined networks. And we truly believe ONAS has, is a major stakeholder in this process. Uh, so this POC exemplifies that ONAS is becoming mature and is capable of being one of the uh, SDN platforms on which to develop on.